Now let's take a look at the following algebraic expression. Evaluate 8 plus 6 times x minus 3 squared for x equals 13. We'll evaluate this by making a substitution wherever we see the x as 13 instead. 8 plus 6 times 13 minus 3 squared. Now by order of operations, we'll work within the parentheses first. 8 plus 6 times, inside the parentheses, 13 minus 3 is 10, and then squared. We know to apply the exponent power next. 8 plus 6 times 10 squared, which is 100. We now apply the multiplication to the problem to give us 600, and now the addition to give us our answer of 608. Here's another algebraic expression to evaluate. Evaluate x squared plus 4x minus 7 for x equals negative 5. In substituting negative 5 in for x, we need to remember that if we're squaring, we want to enclose this within parentheses. We'll also use parentheses to enclose the negative 5 in the multiplication portion, and then we have the subtraction of 7. Now, negative 5 squared means negative 5 times negative 5, which will be a positive 25. We're going to add to that 4 times negative 5, which would be negative 20, and then subtract 7. 25 plus negative 20 is going to be 5. 5 minus 7 gives us a result of negative 2. In the following algebraic expression, we'll have more than one variable. Let's see how to work with it. Evaluate negative 3x squared plus 4xy minus y cubed for x equals 5 and y equals negative 1. We're going to make a substitution here. We'll have negative 3. We have x equals 5, so this will be 5 squared, plus 4 times our value of x, which is 5, times our value of y, which is negative 1. Subtract from that the value of y, negative 1, cubed. Let's apply our exponent powers first. That's going to give us negative 3 multiplied times 5 squared, which is 25. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite the middle term, which doesn't have any exponent powers in it. Then we have a subtraction. We're going to raise negative 1 to the third power. That would be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. Now let's do the multiplication. Negative 3 times 25 will be negative 75. In our middle term, we'll have 4 times 5 times negative 1, giving us negative 20. And then notice we have the subtraction of a negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that as the addition of 1. To evaluate this further, then, we have negative 75 plus a negative 20, which would be negative 95. Add 1 to that to give us negative 94 as the result. Let's see how to use a given formula to come up with a value. The mathematical model, m equals negative 120x squared plus 998x plus 590, describes the number of calories needed per day, m, by men in age group x with moderately active lifestyles. According to the model, how many calories per day are needed by men between the ages of 19 and 30 inclusive with this lifestyle? And then secondly, we're going to answer the question, does this underestimate or overestimate the number shown by the following graph and by how much? Well, in looking at the graph, what we need to look at is the age range of 19 to 30, and that is considered group 4. So in our model that we're using, the x value stands for the value 4. So we're going to evaluate this by substitution. m is going to equal negative 120 times 4 squared plus 998 multiplied times 4 plus 590. Now we're going to evaluate by using order of operations. m is going to equal negative 120 multiplied times 16. We'll evaluate the exponential expression first. We're going to multiply 998 times 4, and I've done that previously. We end up with 3,992 
plus 590. In our next step, we need to perform the multiplication of 120 times 16. That's a negative 120, so that gives us a negative 1920 plus 3992 plus 590. Evaluating this sum is going to give us m equals 2,662. Now, that's going to stand for the number of calories per day needed by men in this age group. Remember that we're supposed to now look at this value and compare it to the value given in the following graph. In the graph, where the age range is from 19 to 30, the group of men should need 2,700. So if we take our value of 2,700 that is given in the graph and subtract from it the value that we came up with, 2,662, we come up with 38. So our model underestimates by 38 calories. Now let's look at simplifying an algebraic expression. We want to simplify 7 times 2x minus 3 minus 11x. We're going to begin by using distributive property. That is, we're going to multiply 7 times the 2x, and then subtract from that 7 times the 3, and then we have our minus 11x, which will move down. We can multiply 7 times 2 to give us 14x, minus 7 times 3 is 21, minus 11x. Now, we cannot combine the constant value of negative 21 with either of the other two terms, as they both have the variable x in them. Instead, what we can note is that these two terms are what we'll call like terms. We can combine them by combining their coefficients. And so we're going to have 14 minus 11, which would be 3, and then we carry down the variable x. 14x minus 11x is 3x. The subtraction of 21 has to remain in the formula as is. Now let's look at another simplification problem with algebraic expressions. Simplify 7 times 4x squared plus 3x plus 2 times 5x squared plus x. We're going to begin by using the distributive property of multiplication over addition. We'll have 7 being multiplied times the first term inside the parentheses plus 7 multiplied times the second term inside the parentheses. We can do the same process for our second grouping. We have 2 multiplied times the first term inside the parentheses, that's 5x squared, plus 2 multiplied times the second term inside the parentheses. Now let's go ahead and do some multiplication. 7 times 4 is 28. So we can rewrite our first term as 28x squared. 7 times 3 is 21. That will give us 21x. 2 times 5 is 10. We have 10x squared and then our last term is 2x. At this point, we're going to try to combine like terms. Now, like terms require us to have exactly the same variable expression, and of course that means that if we have x to the second power, we cannot combine it with just simply x to the first power. Instead, you can see that we have a 28x squared, we have a 10x squared, those are like terms. To combine those, we can think about factoring out the x squared, and it would look like this, 28, plus 10 multiplied times x squared. We can see that we have a 21x and a 2x. Those are going to also be like terms. And we can factor out the x, and that gives us our coefficients, 21 plus 2 times x. 28 plus 10 is 38, so we have 38x squared. 21 plus 2 is 23, so we have 23x. Now, as you're working with this and you become more proficient, we'll end up probably not doing this step where we factor out the x squared. Instead, we'll just notice that we add our coefficients in front of our like terms in order to get our result. Here's another problem dealing with simplification of an algebraic expression. Simplify 6x plus 4, and then we see a set of brackets, 7 minus parentheses, x minus 2, close parentheses, close bracket. Now, the bracket really has the same function as a set of parentheses. We're going to begin by looking at this and trying to work within parentheses to start with. Now, inside our first set of parentheses, we have x minus 2. We cannot combine those. 
But now we're going to work within the set of brackets. And within the set of brackets, we notice that we have this subtraction of both terms inside the set of parentheses. So we're going to rewrite that as follows. Let's leave the 7 there. The subtraction is going to apply to each term inside the set of parentheses. You can also think about this as a multiplication by negative 1. It's another way to consider it. We can subtract the x first, and then we need to subtract the negative 2. So rewriting, we have our 6x plus 4. We're going to have inside our bracket 7 minus x. Subtraction of a negative 2 will be plus 2. Inside the bracket now, I can combine the 7 and the 2. Typically, what you'll see is that once we lose our second set of parentheses, these brackets will then revert into a set of parentheses. And we'll write this as 9 minus x inside there. We now notice that we have a multiplication by 4 outside the set of parentheses. We can use the distributive law in order to evaluate this. This will be 6x plus it will be 4 times 9 minus 4 times x. Rewriting then gives us 6x plus 4 times 9 is 36 minus 4x. We can now combine our like terms. We have a 6x minus 4x, which would be 2x plus 36 as our simplification.